Don't you just hate it when you go to flip a light switch on and it does something completely different from what you expect it to do? Like turn a light on? Well today I want to show you the Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor, how it works differently in the edit page compared to the cut page. Let's get started. One thing I love about the cut page is there's a feature called close up. It's this button right here on the speed editor. If you tap it when you're in an interview with a wide shot, it drops a clip on V2 that is blown up. You can see it kind of just punches in. So it's almost like you have a second angle of the interview. All right. You can actually also with the speed editor, if you, if you hold this down, it changes the Y position. So you can get that headroom right where you need it to be. Now, if we jump over to the edit page, this is where edit page is different. If you push shift four, that jumps you to the edit page. Close up button does not work, unfortunately. What close up button does, you'll see here, I'm gonna push close up. It actually drops the clip, whatever is in your source monitor on top. So it's basically uh, a place on top. Um, and I don't know why they did it that way. It could have easily been uh, another close up. Maybe they'll fix that in the future, but that's one thing that doesn't work in the edit page that does in the cut page and that's the close up button. So one thing the edit page can do that the cut page cannot do is J and L cuts. So if we take a look here on that timeline, I have a B-roll shot that goes into an interview and then I scroll over here to another B-roll shot. So what I, what I wanna do is I wanna have this B-roll shot overlap this section of audio and then vice versa on the other end, I wanna do a J cut. So I want to still have his audio talking about this cabin, the back of the house while we see that. So you can't do that in the cut page unless you're using a, a video two track. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if we go to shift uh, three, which takes us to the cut page and use the roll button, doing a J and L cut, it's really a lot about using the roll button. So we're gonna hold that and then you can easily see that shifted over. We'll go to shift four and it just took everything audio with it. I didn't have a choice of not having that audio linked to that function. So I'm gonna undo that. It's escape, double tap, that undoes that operation. And then when we're here in the edit page, we wanna make sure that our auto track selectors, which are these guys right here, are disabled. So it's a shift click to enable and disable. So we're gonna disable those for the audio because we want the audio to stay put. And then the linked selection button right here, we're also gonna turn that off, which is um, command shift L, which is a great sh keyboard shortcut to learn. So now that that is all set up, we're just gonna be selecting V1 and we can use the roll button, which is on the speed editor right here. We'll take this, roll it over, and you can see we now have that overlap that we were wanting. And then we can go quickly over here to the tail of it and roll and pull that up with the speed editor and take a listen and hopefully it sounds amazing. And for some reason the lady said to her husband, I'm gonna go check the back door. I, th I think I didn't lock it. Well, it's a good thing he went back to get that door locked. Anyways, that is how J and L cuts work in the edit page versus if we go shift three to jump back to the cut page, you just can't do them. The one thing I will say is that here in the cut page is it maintains that asymmetric sort of trim that you had done. So if I go and continue to roll this further, look at this, shift four to go back here. It has actually maintained that asynchronous relationship on the timeline, which is awesome. Um, these two pages talk to each other all day long. Don't be afraid to use them both at the same time and back and forth. So next up is the detail level of source. If I tap source in the speed editor when I'm in the cut page, click that right there. We can see up here we've got two super long clips back to back and it shows you this little line right here tells you when we've switched from one clip to the, the, the next one. So one's the wide shot, one's the close up of this interview. Now what I mean by detail level of source that's so great in the cut page is if I mark an in point anywhere in here and an out point and then I tap source again, that's magical. Look at that, it just blew into just the section that I had marked. If I wanna go back, I tap escape on the speed editor right there. I can clear my in and out marks by double tapping those right there and I can see everything again. So what if I just wanna refine, you know, this interview is 30 minutes long or something. I just wanna take a closer look here on my user interface of just this section to this section, I tap source. And now I just am seeing that section of it, which I can edit into the timeline. If I'm in the edit page, however, shift four to jump to the edit page and I go up to source, source button does work. So it pulled up that source clip um, because source tape does not exist in the edit page. I can mark an in and out point all I want and, and get frame accurate. 
but I'd never am able to get a more zoomed in view here in the interface, as opposed to if you jump back to the cut page and go to source and I hit escape so I can see the whole clips again. I just say, I just wanna see this section to this section and I hit source again. It gives me that zoomed in view so I can work things at a much more sort of refined user interface level. Hey, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips, where I help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss out on the tip next week. Now, there's four ways you can use a search style that work in the cut page but don't work at all in the edit page. So I'll show you those really quickly if, you, if you're unaware. So there's a title button right here. If you double tap and hold, you can use a search style to scroll through and change to whatever... Uh, font you want to try out. So that's one cool thing. Another thing you can do is you, if you want to go down later in the timeline, you can change the default color of a marker. So if you double tap the audio level button, which is right here, so double tap hold, it brings up a wheel and you can change your marker color selection. And anytime you drop a marker after that, which is like a, a double tap, um, it's that color. And if you want to change it again, you can just double tap hold and let's make it Red. I don't know. Um, the other feature I was going to mention is the transition type selection. So right here I have a cross dissolve. You can click on the transition button, which is right here. Just hold that down and that pulls up every transition that Resolve has built in. So you can change the dissolve to like, I don't know, an oval iris and sort of see how that <laughs> that's a pretty funky one, uh, but you can see how that might work. And then the fourth one that I was going to mention is the interface sizing. So over here on the right side, there's this little button here, which if you didn't know, if you pull this up and down, it makes your viewer smaller or larger. Um, you can also do that here with the search style. So if you double tap the snap button, you can scroll and make that larger and smaller. So the speed editor has all these amazing buttons, like a number pad right here. It would be great if that worked in the edit page. Unfortunately, it does not. In order to do multicam with the speed editor, you have to be in the cut page. You use the sync bin button, which is right here, and that pulls up the, the clips you've synced up. So I've got a wide and a tight angle here. If I want to cut to something else, I can just click the cam two button, hold it down with the search dial, and just sort of paint that on. And then if I want to review it, I can hit timeline. School. And when I first met him, I just... So we can see that did a nice cut. Now, if you go over to the edit page, which is shift four, we've gone through that a bunch. Um, you're going to be stuck to using a traditional multicam style edit. So in this instance, you can still do multicam for sure. It's just you need to know none of these buttons right here in the center of the thing work. The move button on the speeder is a great tool. It's this underneath the split right here. So if you hold that down, it's going to let you rearrange clips. So I have a clip of my boys here at the end of the timeline and I want to move them to the beginning. So what I'll do is move the search dial till it's selected over it. I'm going to hold down on move and you can see I'm able to use the search dial to move that to the beginning of the timeline and it just snaps. That's the key here in the cut page. It just sort of snaps along the way. Maybe I want to use um this as a in between shot i'll take this i'll hold down on there and move that to there so it goes from this shot down to there and you know maybe i don't even need that so i'll hit ripple delete you know but that move button the importance of the move button here is if you hold it it snaps the entire clip left and right to get your story in the right order if you go to the edit page however command plus on that to get that zoomed in and if I use the move button now, you're gonna see it behaves completely different. So if I hold it down, it's moving, <laughs> but it's not snapping it in any way. It's kind of doing a slide, but not really because it's leaving those gaps and you can't rearrange, you can't change the order at all. So move button acts a little differently here in the edit page. Hold up, I wanna call a time out. I know this software is evolving, so I want you to call out and leave a comment down below right now on anything that you don't see working in the edit page with your speed editor. Okay, time back in. I want to say if you're getting something out of this video, tap the like button. That way everyone can learn from our tips about the speed editor. This is something you might not know about. These cam buttons here in the speed editor are not just for sync bin and multicam. They actually also control your track selection for where you want to target a trim. What I mean by that is I have a more complicated edit here on the timeline and it has, obviously you can see here, there's multiple video tracks, one, two, three, four. These relate to video tracks, one, two, three, four, as far as the selection of where you want to do your trims. So if you're in the cut page, this is where they're different. If you're in the cut page, 
these work. So if you push one here, um, we can see we're selecting track one uh, down here. And if I push two, it just jumped up and it's kind of hard to see because it's so tiny, but that is green now. So I can trim that automatically. It's jumped my little smart edit and indicator up to track two. And if I want to go back to one, you can see that jumps back down to one. So if I want to make any edit changes with the trim in, trim out, rolls, any of that sort of stuff, it's controlled with these cam one, cam two buttons or whatever you're closest to. But this is nice because if you have a lot of edits that are really close to each other, you can really target where you want the edit to perform at. Now here in the edit page, these cam one and cam two buttons do absolutely nothing. You still can edit and trim stuff that are on those upper tracks. It's just the way Resolve determines where you can make that trim at on here. So I'm gonna go to jog so it's a little more refined. Um, it's just whatever it's closest to. So like if I wanted to trim this thing back or forward here, it's just because I'm close to it. Uh, it's not because I've done any special sort of selection. So it's a little bit more automatic, but it's nice to have that more precision control over in the cut page. Shift three to get back there. You can see this little red indicator and that's all controlled from the cam buttons. The edit page lets you drop a marker or it says mark here on the speed editor. It's the audio level button. If you double tap it, you can drop it directly onto a clip itself, which is really nice and handy because you're gonna move that clip around a lot of times and you wanna maybe have that mark or that note attached to the clip. Whereas in the, in the cut page, if you drop a marker, double tap, it's always specifically just to the timeline as a whole. So if we go back over here to the edit page, there's a little trick to setting this up. So right now you can notice as I move my search dial, it's sort of selecting the clip as I scroll over it. The way you do that or way you allow that to happen, and this is how you get that marker to appear on the clip and not on the timeline, is up here under timeline, there's a thing called selection follows playhead. If that is unchecked, it's gonna apply the mark to the timeline up here in the timeline header. But if it's selected and you have, a, or if you just manually select a clip like this, um, it takes precedent over the timeline when you drop a new marker down. So that's a great thing that you can do in the edit page that you can't do in the cut page with the speed editor. Now we're looking at the smart insert button here on the speed editor. It's the upper left button. I use it all the time. What it does is in the cut page, you get this smart indicator placement location, whatever you want to call it. If you get close to whatever the nearest thing is to the playhead, it sort of will snap to it. So in the source, I've got a clip that I want to drop right in there and insert into that spot. I'll hit timeline to see where that goes. Now you can see my playhead is not exactly where this indicator is. Well, it's going to drop a clip where the indicator is in the cut page. So I'll hit smart insert and it has dropped it right there without messing up the end of this amazing Cowtown USA title. Now the edit page is totally different. Smart insert becomes insert. So let's undo that. Double tap the escape button. We'll go to shift four to get to the edit page. And I've still got the playhead here at sort of that same spot. I've got source so I can still see that clip. I can mark my in and out wherever I want on it. The search style. And now if I hit smart insert here on the edit page, look at that. It actually just does an insert a normal insert it doesn't pay attention to any of that sort of smart locating of the next edit point it has sort of split this clip that had this amazing cowtown title so that's not what i wanted uh, you could still do everything totally fine here in the edit page with insert you just have to be a little bit more precise so you got to get that that playhead right where you want it to be and it's a little bit tricky to do with the search style it's almost easier to do with up and down arrows but if you did it there you could still hit smart insert and you'll get the same effect it's just a little slower. So I think this video would be short-minded if I didn't explain the fact that the cut page and edit page actually are fundamentally different editing environments and situations. And that's why the speed editor works differently in those areas. So the cut page, at least on V1, is a lot like Final Cut Pro 10's magnetic timeline is what they call it. Um, it's basically a rippled timeline. It's every time you make a trim, it's not gonna wanna leave a gap. The edit page, on the other hand, if you're in selection mode, it will leave a gap. So it maintains the timing from beginning to end. The full view and review button is powerful. It's this little red button right here. What it does, if you tap it in the cut page, double tap it, it takes you back to whatever your pre-roll and going into your post-roll is set and your user preferences for editing. I'm gonna hit escape to back out of that so we don't see a full screen and hit stop. Now the way it acts differently in the edit page, shift four to get jump over to there, is 
if you double tap it, watch what happens. It just goes right back and forth. So in other words, it doesn't do the review function in the edit page. You can tap full view and it does go full screen. You're just gonna have to manually go back with the search dial and manually push play. So it's a little bit more effort. It's still doable, just a small thing to take note of. And before I move on to my bonus tip about using the search dial in the color page, I just wanna let you know, I have a whole playlist about the speed editor and DaVinci Resolve. It's, it'll pop up somewhere around here right now. Uh, click that if you wanna learn more about it and get up to speed with the speed editor. That, was, that wasn't good. <laughs> um, anyways, I'd love for you to check that out. You'll learn a ton. So you made it to the bonus tip. We're over here in the color page, and what you can do with the search dial with the speed editor is if you hit Command W, that goes to your image wipe. It's this button right here. And you can wipe whatever section is for the comparison to do like a color matching, shot matching to another shot that you have over here in your gallery, whatever is selected over here. So you can clearly see the speed editor works in much more than just the cut page. If you want to learn more about the speed editor or DaVinci Resolve in general, I have a great playlist that should be popping up somewhere right now. And click on over to there and I'll see you in those videos.